All right, welcome to Aiken Technical College Biology. Today for Biology 112, we're going to review the bones of the skull. We're going to start by looking at the bones that make up the cranial cavity, the bones that protect your brain. We start right up front with the frontal bone. Your forehead is part of the frontal bone. Along the top of the skull, we have both the right and left parietal bones. The very back of the skull, we have the occipital bone. And along both the right and left hand side, we have the temporal bone. Temporal bones kind of get the little hook in there. Temporal on the right hand side and temporal bone on the left hand side. Immediately in front of the temporal bone we have the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone runs all the way underneath the skull and we see part of the sphenoid bone in front of the other temporal. So the sphenoid runs all along the bottom of the skull directly in front of the temporal bone. On the front of the skull, we have the nasal bone. Nasal bone provides the bridge of your nose. We also have the zygomatic bone. Zygomatic are your prominent cheekbones. Your upper teeth are on the maxillary bone. Your bottom teeth are on the mandible, your lower jaw bone. And then the whole of the base of the skull, where your spinal cord connects, that's your foramen magnum. All right, welcome to Aiken Technical College Biology. Today we're going to look at the spinal column. For reference, we recognize that the spinal column is oriented to the base of the skull. This is the occipital bone. The foramen magnum is the hole where the spinal cord runs through. The first seven vertebrae are your cervical vertebra. They represent the vertebra of your neck. The next 12 vertebrae are those that are associated with your ribs. Those are thoracic vertebrae. In your lower back, we have five lumbar vertebrae, very, very lower back. You support your lumbar region, lumbar vertebra. Between the hips, we have sacral vertebra, which form the sacrum. That's one big fused structure, the sacrum. And then we're all familiar with the tailbone, which is the last very end portion of the vertebral column. Those are the cossageal vertebrae, which form the cossex or the tailbone. Cossex, sacrum, lumbar, thoracic, cervical vertebrae. Hi, welcome to Aiken Technical College Biology. For Biology 112, today we're going to review the disarticulated or loose vertebra. We're going to begin by talking about structures that are found in all types of vertebra. We're going to look at the very prominent part of the bone is what we refer to as the spinous process. The spinous process. There's a single spinous process coming off the top of the bone. Towards the sides, we have two almost wing-like structures, and those are referred to as the transverse processes. So we have one on the right-hand side and one on the left-hand side. All vertebrae also have a body. That's just the big, chunky bone part. And, of course, the spinal cord runs through the vertebra, so all vertebrae have a vertebral foramen. That's literally the hole in the bone that the spinal cord will run through. Let's talk about the individual types of vertebra. What I have in my hand are lumbar vertebra. We distinguish a lumbar vertebra. They're big, they're heavy bones, they're large. And we look at the position in profile of the spinous process. The spinous process is straight off of the body, so it makes a big line straight across. We compare a lumbar vertebra with a thoracic vertebra. We see the spinous process, transverse process, body, and vertebral foramen. The body in a thoracic vertebra has kind of a heart shape to it, so that's one way of distinguishing thoracic. But the most prominent is when you look in profile, when you look from the side. The bone isn't straight up and down. It's got a definitive angle. So the spinous process comes off at a very different angle from the body of the bone. That's a thoracic vertebra. It's also a little smaller and lighter than a lumbar. And when we look at a cervical vertebra from the neck, spinous process off the top, Sides are transverse processes. The body is a lot smaller, and we see the most obvious thing about a cervical vertebra are these extra holes in the vertebra. If you have extra holes besides the main one, it's cervical. They're the only bones that have extra holes. Those are called transverse foramen, and they're only found in a cervical vertebra.